In the early 1970s, our country was rocked by presidential scandal. After a security guard botched a burglary in a D.C. hotel, the American public learned the name Watergate. It was a long, drawn-out political catastrophe that led to President Richard Nixon's downfall. That because of the Watergate matter, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. While Nixon wasn't the man behind the burglary, he was involved in the cover-up. And as we all know, the cover-up is worse than the crime. Back then, an enterprising press corps held our political leaders' feet to the fire. Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein exposed the president and his role in the containment of the scandal. Must have been nice. The media actually trying to hold the president accountable for the actions of those around him. Now fast forward 50 years to today, and we're looking at a drastically different media landscape. Rather than cover the crimes of political players, they're doing everything they can to cover them up. Because we're witnessing today one of the biggest containment operations in American history, a censorship campaign to cover up for one of the most corrupt first families in American history and to sway an election. Back in October of 2020, the New York Post gave us our October surprise. Damaging emails, text messages, and photos of Joe Biden's son, Hunter, striking up deals and raking in millions of just dirty, sketchy foreign cash when his father was vice president. Using Joe Biden as a cash register for the family, Hunter Biden was the bag man, and he put our national security at risk at the taxpayer's expense. And when those leaks out of the Hunter laptop came out, we covered them. We brought you the facts. But the media, big tech, along with the Biden campaign and, of course, the Washington swamp just swooped in and tried to cover it all up. Hey, they had an election to win. But now, Hunter could be on the verge of being indicted for tax fraud and maybe money laundering and illegal lobbying. Two weeks ago... The New York Times admitted that Hunter's laptop was, in fact, real. This came after the media spent over a year spinning the laptop as Russia disinformation. The Washington Post, at the time, had even called the thing the Hunter Biden non-scandal. But it looks like things are changing today. In a bombshell release, the Washington Post joined the New York Times in authenticating Hunter's laptop. Not only did they acknowledge the laptop from hell is real, but they confirmed what we've been saying all along. The Biden family, Joe's son and Joe's brother, were raking in millions of dollars from Chinese tycoons tied to China's military and tied to the Chinese Communist Party. Confirming they were paid almost $5 million by a Chinese energy conglomerate, CEFC, that was acting as the arm of China's Belt and Road Initiative, an insidious and corrupt thrust into the world and a threat to U.S. national security, proving that dirty Chinese money went directly into bank accounts owned by Hunter and Joe's brother, James Biden. The Washington Post even broke it up for us like this. CEFC, China Energy, paid $3.8 million in consulting fees to Hunter and Jim Biden. What were they doing to earn this money? Nobody knows. It was basically a grease job. These Chinese guys were so shady, American intelligence put one of them under FISA surveillance for bribing African leaders and helping Iran evade U.S. sanctions. When this shady guy, Patrick Ho, got popped by the feds, the Chinese wired Hunter another million bucks. For what? To be his defense attorney. Wait, but Hunter isn't a defense attorney. Well, which probably explains why Patrick Ho went to prison. But what was Hunter doing representing a corrupt Chinese foreign national looking down the barrel of bribery charges here in the United States? The Washington Post even confirmed that the Bidens in this Chinese energy firm had a joint bank account together under the name of the company Hudson West 3 where money was flowing in and out to Hunter and Uncle Jim's individual accounts. Huh. 
And they even verified that shiny three-carat diamond that Hunter got from him. Remember that giant rock? They confirmed all that. But, but, they just happened to leave out one thing. The big guy and his ties in all of these deals. They're saying there's no evidence of any of it. Quote, the Post did not find evidence that Joe Biden personally benefited from or new details about the transactions with CEFC. He didn't personally benefit from it. Hunter was dicing up dirty Chinese money between his bank accounts. We know that Joe and Hunter had joint bank accounts together and that Hunter's business partners were filing Joe's taxes, paying off renovations at his Delaware home and paying for his private phone lines. The laptop gave us all that in 2020. Hunter's even on the record of complaining about paying the big guy's bill. The Washington Post suspiciously didn't report the $6 million in wires from China to Hunter's partner, Rob Walker, in 2017 for consulting that Hunter and his partners did in China in 2015 and 2016, the years Biden happened to be VP. Emails showing Hunter telling his partner to wire him the money in weekly installments. For some reason, the Washington Post was unable to verify those emails. Because if those emails are verified, the president of the United States is in serious trouble. CNN, who finally decided to cover Hunter's federal probe today, brought in their hatchet man, John Harwood, to parrot the same exact talking points pushed by the Washington Post today. Watch. Until you make uh, someone makes a nexus between what Hunter Biden has done and official activities of Vice President Biden or President Biden, it's uh, a not pretty picture, but it's not really uh, of uh, much public import in terms of the policy of the United States or the administration of the government. But so far, there is zero evidence that Vice President Biden or President Biden has done anything wrong in connection with what Hunter Biden has done. No connection. Since CNN and Washington Post are just catching up on the news from 2020, maybe we should point them to what Hunter's former business associate, Tony Bobolinsky, had to say. On May 2nd, 2017, the night before Joe Biden was to appear at the Milken Conference, I was introduced to Joe Biden by Jim Biden and Hunter Biden. At, and a, at my approximately hour-long meeting with Joe that night, we discussed the Biden's history, the Biden's family business plans with the Chinese, with which he was plainly familiar, at least at a high level. So a former business partner to Hunter confesses that he met with Joe to talk about the Biden family business in China, and the Washington Post and CNN are just acting like that never happened. No connection. Doesn't all this seem a little weird to you? The legacy media didn't bother to cover Hunter's laptop in any serious way for 17 months. But now, all of a sudden, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN are all able to authenticate some elements, just some, found on Hunter's laptop? And isn't it strange that none of them can figure out how to verify any of the evidence that implicates Joe Biden? Hmm, how convenient. The people who called the laptop Russia disinformation now suddenly want you to trust them when they tell you, yeah, Hunter could be in some trouble, but Joe's not the big guy. No 10% for him. They're still denying there was ever smoke while standing in the middle of fire. And it's not just the media. The FBI looks like they're in on it, too. How else would you explain the FBI just miraculously misplacing Hunter's laptop? You are the assistant director of FBI Cyber. I want to know where Hunter Biden's laptop is. Where is it? Sir, I don't know that answer. Now, you're telling me right here is that as the assistant director of FBI Cyber, you don't know where this is after it was turned over to you three years ago. Yes, sir, that's an accurate statement. <laughs> So you have a laptop with damning information on the first family, and no one knows where it is? How's that happen? The FBI was given this laptop 
He gave it three years ago. And now the head guy at FBI Cyber has no idea where it is? Is it in FBI custody? Or is it with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware? Did you guys make a copy of it? This is starting to smell like one giant containment operation. Hunter might be charged, but it's obvious that they're trying to wall off the president from this, keep Joe from being exposed. Either they just don't want the big guy to go down or they want to hold dirt over Biden, use it as leverage, twist his arm so maybe he doesn't run again in 2024. Whatever the reason is, it's clear as day. Joe Biden is compromised. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. When the Russian military invaded Ukraine last month, the most highly credentialed people in the world seemed stunned by it. And that was not very reassuring to the rest of us. Quote, it was a shock to many of the leading experts and policymakers in the United States, Europe, and even Ukraine, explained a fellow expert and policymaker at the Atlantic Council. Quote, the head of German intelligence was so caught off guard that he was still in Kiev and had to be evacuated. That's pretty weird if you think about it, because for weeks, Joe Biden had been speaking in a very loud voice about a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine. They seemed ready for it. And yet it turns out that nobody in Washington, including Biden himself, really thought it was going to happen. And when it did happen, official Washington concluded that Putin must be insane. The casual speculation about Vladimir Putin's mental state has become more serious, wrote National Review. In other words, there's a reason, a good reason, none of us saw this coming. Putin just snapped. He's irrational and impossible to predict. A lot of people took that at face value, but you had to notice that like most explanations you hear in Washington, it was self-exculpatory. It was more an excuse than an analysis. In fact, Putin may well be crazy, but it's fair to assume there was more to the invasion of Ukraine than a single psychiatric episode. And at this point, it would be nice to know exactly what it is, what happened, and why. Why did the Russians do this? It's not treasonous to ask that. It's essential. You can't make wise decisions about the future without understanding what just happened. It's a prerequisite. But our leaders so far have refused to do that. They keep lying to themselves. They're imposing censorship on the rest of us. They're forcing the entire American population to mouth childish slogans about good versus evil. It's insulting, but worse, it's not helpful. This is not how nations survive complex moments like this. Crisis demands crystal clear thinking. So now is the moment to ignore the people who've been consistently wrong and instead listen carefully to the people who've gotten it right in the past, the ones who saw the Ukraine war coming and said so out loud. Those are the people you should be listening to, and one of them is Nigel Farage. Nobody would call Farage a stooge of Vladimir Putin, just the opposite. Farage is a nationalist. He cares about his own country. He's devoted his life to it. In his case, his country is Great Britain, whose long-term interests have been gravely damaged by the Russian invasion and by the West's response to it. The same is true, unfortunately, of our country. The U.S. has never had a president as reckless as Joe Biden is. We're going to pay the price for that for a long time. But Nigel Farage, had you asked him, could have predicted all of this. In fact, he did predict it back in 2014 as the leader of the UK Independence Party. Farage gave a speech to the European Parliament that year, which unfortunately we just saw yesterday. In retrospect, his words seem prophetic. Farage understood what would happen because he saw clearly what had already taken place. Watch this carefully. We think you'll agree it's an analysis worth hearing. Here's Nigel Farage eight years ago on Ukraine. Amongst the long lists of foreign policy failures and contradictions in the last few years, including, of course, the bombing of Libya, uh, the desire to arm the rebels in Syria, has been the unnecessary provocation of Vladimir Putin. This EU empire, ever seeking to expand, stated its territorial claim on the Ukraine some years ago. Uh, just to make that worse, of course, some NATO members said they, they, they too would like the Ukraine to join NATO. We directly encouraged the uprising in the Ukraine that led to the toppling of the President Yanukovych and that led of course in turn to Vladimir Putin reacting. And the moral of the story is if you poke the Russian bear with a stick, don't be surprised when he reacts. Now uh, just to continue with that, today we are rushing through 
an association agreement at undue speed with the Ukraine and as we speak there are NATO soldiers engaged in military exercises in the Ukraine. Have we taken leave of our senses? Do we actually want to have a war with Putin? Because if we do, we're certainly going about it the right way. Perhaps we ought to recognise that the West now faces the biggest threat and crisis to our way of life that we have seen for over 70 years. The recent beheadings of the British and American hostages graphically illustrates the problem. And of course we have our own citizens from our own countries engaged in that struggle too. In the war against Islamic extremism, Vladimir Putin, whatever we may think of him as a human being, is actually on our side. I suggest we grow up. I suggest we recognise the real threat facing all of our countries, communities and societies. We stop playing war games in the Ukraine and we start to prepare a plan to help countries like Syria, like Iraq, like Kenya, like indeed Nigeria, to try and help them to deal with the real threat that faces us. Let's not go on provoking Putin whether we like him or not. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight. First, new evidence tonight that we, you, the American people, all of us, we were all lied to. We were lied to by the mob and the media. We were lied to by big tech. We were lied to repeatedly by the Democratic Party. We were lied to by Joe Biden and the Biden family. We were lied to by our federal government. And all of it was an effort to elect Joe Biden and defeat Donald Trump. Hunter Biden's laptop from hell, in fact, was very real. And the report from the New York Post about that laptop two weeks before the election in 2020, it was accurate and it was true. Now, Hunter's father, remember, the big guy, according to the emails in that laptop, is implicated in his son's shady international business deals. And now both the Washington Post, the New York Times, all of a sudden verify this information. Of course, there's no mystery here. This is a major, massive CYA. According to the Wall Street Journal, the criminal investigation into Hunter Biden is heating up and he could soon face serious criminal charges. So they say, uh-oh, we might be caught covering up for the Bidens again. Uh, we better act like we, we reported on this story. It won't work. In a moment, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. We'll review the biggest lies from America's trusted institutions. But first, let's take a moment to recap what they're lying about. Now, we begin with a little background on Joe Biden's adult son, Hunter Biden. Hunter, obviously, a deeply troubled man. He has struggled with a severe and often debilitating addiction to crack cocaine and prostitutes. He was even discharged from the U.S. military because of his drug problem and because of his lifestyle. Well, his resume and background are anything but pristine, yet for years, zero experience Hunter and his shady business associates uh, garnered lucrative payouts from foreign nationals all over the world. For example, Hunter received a whopping $3.5 million wire transfer from a Russian oligarch, the former first lady of Moscow. He also got $5 million from a state-backed Chinese company, part of a multi-billion dollar deal with the Bank of China, another $100,000 plus for an international shopping spree, compliments of a prominent Chinese national. Why doesn't that happen to any of you? And on top of the $1.5 billion deal with the Bank of China, that's a lot of money. Plus, he also got another hundred grand plus from a Kazakhstan oligarch earmarked for a brand new sports car. What a life he has. And let's not forget the $1.5 million that he received sitting on the board of Burisma Holdings, a massive Ukrainian oil and gas conglomerate with ties to a Russian oligarch. Now, his company made millions in that case. Hunter had zero experience in energy, oil, gas, and no experience with Ukraine. And he had zero experience with investing abroad at also. And still these shady foreign nationals, China, Russia, Eastern Ukraine, Eastern Europe, all making uh, Hunter Biden, the Biden family syndicate, extremely rich. And by the way, it's only the tip of the iceberg. Stop for one second and pause and ask yourself, what if Hunter's name was Trump? Anyway, so why were these wealthy foreigners sending a prostitute-loving crackhead? Why were they giving him so much money?
because his dad was a prominent senator, remember, turned vice president. A lot of this happened when Joe was vice president, and the world knew that Joe had presidential aspirations. Now, they were paying for access to the highest levels of our government, and it appears they got it. Hunter even admitted this obvious fact during an interview with GMA, which was an unmitigated disaster. And let's not forget, as Vice President Biden withheld that billion taxpayer dollars in loan guarantees from Ukraine, you're not getting the billion until you fire that prosecutor. Think about this. A uh, vice president of our country saying, fire a prosecutor or you're not getting the money, and you have six hours, and son of a bee, they did it? They fired the prosecutor. Turns out that prosecutor was investigating zero experience Hunter and the company we was in business with, Burisma, for corruption. In other words, there really was a quid pro quo in Ukraine. It was with Joe and even bragged about it on camera. But according to Joe, he never, ever, one time, never, ever, 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 ever spoke with his son about his business deals ever. Just never came up. Take a look. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. And what I will do is the same thing we did in our administration. There will be an absolute wall between personal and private uh, and, and, and the government. Do you stand by your statement that you did not discuss any of your son's overseas business yes, dealings? Yes, I with stand him? by that statement. We all now know that is a flat out lie. We have evidence to prove it. And not only did Joe know about his son's business partners, he actually met with them. Now, here's Joe. And Hunter, they're pictured with Hunter's favorite Kazakhstan oligarch. And here's Joe with Hunter's uh, Mexican business associates. Uh, but it gets worse. While then Vice President Joe Biden met with Hunter's partners, Hunter, well, he was paying daddy's bills. And according to emails and text messages on the laptop from hell, Hunter acted like a bagman for the entire Biden family syndicate, raking in cash, paying off all the bills. Clearly, this raises massive concerns about whether or not your president, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, was compromised. Now, oh, the media mob, weren't they interested if there was any Trump-Russia collusion that turned out to be a big conspiracy theory lie? Why aren't they interested in this? Now, those with Trump derangement syndrome, they didn't care. They were so desperate to beat Donald Trump, they did their very best to cover all of it up. In October 2020, social media giant Twitter, remember this? They locked the New York Post out of their own account for daring to publish the very true laptop story. Now, Twitter users, they were also blocked from sharing the report, even in private messages. Facebook, they censored the report as well. And two weeks before the election, more than 50 former U.S. intel officials, they signed a letter calling the laptop story Russian disinformation. They had no reason to call it that. They were all lying and protecting Joe. And meanwhile, NPR, you helped pay for that, announced that they wouldn't waste their time on the Hunter Biden report because it wasn't really a story. If it was Donald Trump's sons, it would be a story. One New York Times article referring to the report as farcical Russian disinformation. Washington Post also suggested without evidence it was part of some foreign election disinformation scheme. Where's their proof? Where's their evidence? Now, none of these media outlets ever lifted a finger to verif verify the laptop until now. A new report in the Washington Post uh, details what we've been telling you now for nearly two years on this program, and that is zero experience Hunter Biden got paid millions of dollars from Chinese nationals in return for next to nothing with no expertise other than a connection to his vice president father at the time. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. Kellyanne Conway is the former counselor to President Trump. So Joy's not happy. Chuck Todd's not happy. The Democrats aren't happy. No one's happy with the Democrats and Joe Biden, have you ever seen it like this? And is there anything, Kelly, that they can do to turn things around? 
Haven't seen it like this, and in fact, there are 31 House Democrat retirements already. Jesse, if the Republicans win 32 seats, they'll have the largest majority in 100 years. Wow. Think about that. Wow. They only have to have a handful of seats, about 18 seats to get to the 2010 levels of, of the famous word shellacking, 63 seats lost, and Barack Obama, the president, said we suffered a shellacking, but he made a course correction and went on to win a second term. I don't see that in this White House. They don't seem to admit mistakes, acknowledge that people out there are suffering. Every poll is bad for Biden. In fact, for Chuck today, for Chuck Todd today, that is the third consecutive NBC News poll to show more than 70 percent of Americans saying things are off on the wrong track. Now, the centrists in this country, the independents and the centrists, are mad at Biden for a different reason that AOC and Joy Behar are mad. The centrists and independents are mad at Biden because he has no control of inflation, education, immigration, national security, border security, you name it, there's chaos everywhere. They're mad at him for that, and his poll numbers reflect it. That should be a Democratic problem, not just a Biden problem. The trick for the Republicans now is to make every Democrat own and eat these bad Biden policies and his lack of goodwill. Number two, the AOC and Joy Behar view is different. AOC and the other 96 people in the Progressive Caucus, they're mad at Biden because they think he hasn't gone far enough. She this week in a New York Magazine article said, listen, he has to start using executive order to get the Green New Deal passed, more rights for immigrants, uh, cancel all students at all of this liberal progressive wish list that he promised to make. Remember, they were afraid of Bernie Sanders becoming the nominee. So they, they put Joe Biden in there, they put Kamala Harris on the ticket, and yet Joe Biden has tried to capitulate and mollify the hard left. At the same time, they're not happy with him. So it's not just a Biden problem. I think it's a Democrat problem. And unless the Republicans really screw it up, they should have a very strong fall. All right. Well, the Republicans have screwed things up before, Kellyanne, so fingers <laughs> crossed. You never know what's going to happen a few months away. Thank you so much for joining Primetime. And you got a Thank big you. book coming out, so good luck with that. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. Brett Tolman is a former U.S. attorney and is the executive director for Right on Crime. So when you opened up the Washington Post today and read this explosive report, much of which we already knew, what went through your mind? It went through my mind that what has happened here is main justice in Washington, D.C. has brought uh, everything inside D.C. Um, you know, when I was U.S. attorney, and Jesse, not a lot of people realize this, but each individual U.S. attorney has independent authority. They're not under the finger of, of DOJ. They're nominated and confirmed by the president and the Senate, and they have the exact same authority as the attorney general. But if they cave and they give in and they let Maine justice take control, this is what you start to see. You see politics, you see containment. And that's, that's what I saw when I saw the Washington Post story today. So this is being run out of Delaware. This was a Trump appointee, U.S. attorney in Delaware. People say good things about the guy. He's had this laptop for a while. He's had a grand jury up for a while on this, taking testimony. He's got bank records. He's got direct testimony. He's got wire numbers. He's got everything. You're saying he's getting leaned on by the attorney general, Joe's guy, to just keep this thing contained and not pursue this any farther? That was the first thought I had. When I was U.S. attorney, I had main justice occasionally try to put pr pressure on me. I'm aware of other U.S. attorneys. It happens. You know, depending on how independent, how strong you can withstand Maine justice, you have a job to do. I would hope that the U.S. attorney in Delaware would have already brought indictments. Certainly what we know is not just smoke. There's enough for search warrants, emails, devices of not just Hunter Biden, but his uncle and, and of his father. The, the implication that 10 percent of illegal money was going to Joe Biden is plenty for search warrants to find out exactly what was happening. Wow. So if you were a U.S. attorney and you saw hold 10 percent for the big guy and this was a really, really dirty Chinese conglomerate linked to the People's Liberation Army, you would serve a warrant on <laughs> Joe Biden? Uh, I would be I would be seeking FISA warrants for the connection to a foreign country and, and, and a foreign country that is the enemy of the United States. I would be seeking warrants 
United States warrants so that we could we could get into emails and into the financial records of Joe Biden and of uh, Hunter Biden and others. Unbelievable. Brett Tolman, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jesse. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. Here now with more are the senators. They are behind the key report detailing Hunter's shady finances. Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, along with Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. Uh, gentlemen, great to see you both. I'll start with you, Senator Johnson, if you can explain you know, what we now know. Is there anything in my monologue that you heard that is not true? And what else are you learning as you dig deeper into your investigation? No, Sean, you laid it all out. And, of course, we've known this. Those of us that had inquiring minds, we've known this for you know, close to two years now. It was obvious Hunter's laptop was authentic as soon as we started seeing the information from it. But the media has been complicit. You know, here's a few more details. Hunter Biden knew exactly who he was dealing with. You know, he called uh, Patrick Ho the spy chief of China. Uh, he, he knew that uh, uh, Devin Archer uh, was involved in a, you know, he was in, eventually he, we proved that he was involved in a fraud against uh, Indian tribes. He was convicted of that. Devin Archer met with Joe Biden in the White House in April 2014, right around the exact same time within a couple of days of when Devin Archer became a board member of Burisma. A few weeks later, uh, Hunter Biden became a board member. So this is an enormous, uh, tangled web uh, of, you know, a vast web of uh, financial foreign entanglements. And we've known this all along. And as Tony Boblinski said, uh, Joe Biden is compromised. I, I think it's pretty obvious he has to be. Cancels Nord Stream 2 pipeline. He cancels the Ch China initiative, which is the DOJ investigations into the universities of, of uh, Chinese stealing our intellectual property. So, no, this is incredibly dirty, but the mainstream media has been complicit. They've been covering it up. And what the Washington Post learned from its next Nixon coverage is when you've, when you've been caught covering things up, you do a modified limited hangout. That's exactly what the Washington Post did. They're not revealing all the information. This is minimal information for the American public. They're just covering their you-know-whats. You know, Senator Grassley, in your report in November of 2020, which we covered extensively, you pointed out over the course of your investigation into how Hunter Biden would use his father's position and name to enrich himself and his father, uh, and the fact that in these emails from this laptop, we now can confirm that Joe Biden benefited financially from it. Also, Joe Biden lied to the American people when he said he never had discussions with Hunter about his foreign uh, business dealings. Uh, you tell me, Senator, this is not our first rodeo uh, in, on issues like this. That sounds like pay to play corruption to me. Well, we have bank records that back up everything that is in the laptop, and they very clearly show that uh, there was these uh, uh, bank records that tie uh, uh, Hunter Biden directly with people in China, business people in China that are directly connected with the Chinese Communist Party and the government, and to some extent, maybe the military and the intelligence service. So there's no doubt about it. But the really sad thing is the media should have been doing their job in August of 2019 when I started this investigation. And instead, what they were doing was peddling the information that the Democrats were putting out is that we were peddling uh, Russian disinformation. And now we know it's the Democrats and the media that was backing them up were the ones peddling the uh, Russian disinformation. And could you imagine, Senator Johnson, if the last name of Hunter happened to be Trump? Um, in your report, as you have gone forward, and what you said earlier uh, this week is that you discovered, you and Senator Grassley, uh, that money from the CEFC, which is effectively an arm of the Chinese government, was went directly to Hunter Biden. Now, there's a shopping spree involved. There's $5 million involved. Uh, a billion five deal with the Bank of China. I'm not sure why they wouldn't go to Goldman Sachs or or Deutsche Bank or uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and a real company because I don't see any experience he had. 
Uh, but these have ties directly to the chi communist Chinese government, does it not? And military? Yeah, absolutely. And remember, Xi Jinping, the uh, chairman of uh, CEFC, he just went missing. You know, CEFC, you know, it's a multi-billion dollar oil and gas company, just kind of goes poof. That, that doesn't happen with a legitimate company. That, that's a company that's controlled by the, the Communist Chinese Party. And let's face it, just, you know, five million, a million, three and a half million, four million dollars from Burisma, we're up already over 13 million dollars. For what? what? What qualified Hunter Biden from getting all that money for Biden, Inc.? His name. He was influence, influence peddling. This is the sleaziest thing uh, that uh, I've seen, certainly, in politics. And, you know, I want to really thank Senator Grassley for his tenaciousness in helping me investigate this. We've been a pretty good team. Uh, by the way, Sean, we both have tough re-elections. We need a lot of help from your audience. I'm, I'm Ron Johns for Senate.com. Chuck is Grassley Works. Dot com, and he does work hard. All right, uh, if you want to get the, all this stuff exposed, we need some help. Senator Grassley, this is the main question. Joe Biden lied when he said he had no knowledge of his son's foreign business dealings. Now we know that's a lie. Now the question is, uh, as it relates to Russia, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and China, uh, is it possible we have a president of the United States that is compromised, that they have personal information potentially blackmail information about Hunter Biden, former crack addict, a guy that frequented prostitutes, uh, and that might compromise his ability to deal with these countries? Is that a fair question, Senator? It is a fair question, and at this point, it's a question with me, but every American ought to keep it in the back of his mind, as, as particularly as our government is dealing with the Chinese government our number one competitor uh, in the world and a number two economy in the world. And I think it's legitimate to th raise that question. Uh, I wish I could say absolutely yes, but for somebody to say that over the years, that eight years of being vice president and also then uh, being out of office but still having the Biden name and the prestige of that, that, uh, that you never talk this with your family. That's just like my son and I are in farming. We talk about farming all the time. Exactly. Same question, Senator Johnson. Um, is it Now, we learned that Libya had a dossier, and they knew all about Hunter Biden's issues. Let's put it, I'm being kind. Uh, isn't it likely the communist Chinese and the Russians and the Ukrainians and all these other countries have a dossier of dirt on Joe Hunter Biden and the rest of the family syndicate? Because I would say that puts them in a position of potential blackmail. Is that right? Yeah, Sean, we may not know all the details, but I tell you who does. Russian intelligence, Chinese intelligence, Iranian intelligence, North Korean intelligence. You know, my guess there are elements within our intelligence department, uh, our intelligence community, that know as well. They're just not going to tell us. They're not going to tell the American public because there's corruption in the deep state. Chuck and I, we, we asked for information from Gina Haspel. She wouldn't even return our phone call to tell us why she wouldn't respond to our legitimate oversight request. So it's a very deep state. It's pervasive. It's, it's filled with liberal leftists. And that's one of our big problems in this country today. Well, if that's true, then that means we have as a country, a potentially a compromised president potentially uh, his family subject to blackmail of some kind, or they have some leverage that they hold over them. Senator Johnson, Senator Grassley, thank you both for being courageous and um, supporting both of you in your campaigns. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. There have been polls taken since uh, the election in 2020 where I think one of the polls said that 10% of the people who voted for Joe Biden would not have voted for Joe Biden if they would have known the Hunter Biden story. And that, many have suggested on the political right and elsewhere, is one of the reasons why the mainstream media and social media giants, for the most part, had a complete blockade of information. We're not going to talk about Hunter Biden because it simply is Russian disinformation. Yeah, remember if you tried to tweet it out, if you tried uh, to tweet the, the Post story they'd out? They'd shut you down. Uh, you're talking about the New York Post. They were one of the first outfits to get it, along with the Daily Mail, Fox News. We all reported it. Well, yesterday, uh, late in the afternoon, there was an alert 
that the Washington Post did an investigation. Nine months ago, they got a hold of a copy of the laptop hard drive. And the headline was, Inside Hunter Biden's Multi-Million Dollar Deals with the Chinese Energy Company. As it turns out, the Washington Post uh, hired a couple of uh, people who are really good at this kind of thing, and they realized that these email on the hard drive were authentic. Mm -hmm. And so uh, some of them were about Hunter's deal with CEFC, uh, which is a Chinese energy company that paid him $5 million, and others uh, verified the email with Burisma, where he was paid a million dollars. A million dollars each year. Yeah. Yeah, so they hired these two guys, uh, Matt Green, Johns Hopkins University security researcher, and Jake Williams, former NSA operative and forensics expert, and both concluded that the emails have cryptographic signatures that are so hard to fake, right. even for the best computer hackers, they say. They got the hard drive in June, they spent months reviewing the data, and they made two copies of the hard drive and now they are saying these emails are authentic. And remember, was it last Welcome week or the, the week club. before? It was New York Times right. that finally admitted these emails are authentic. And you've always said, why are they now saying this? Why are they now looking into this? Well, He's either going to be indicted or... It will, it's a big story. It's a, it's a gigantic story. You cannot story. cover it. Hunter's either going to be indicted and they need to make their history right with the story and say, well, you know, we came out eventually and said that. Or maybe it's time to squeeze Joe Biden out and this would help disqualify him. So uh, the Washington Post goes out of their way to say the Washington, uh, how the Biden family has profited off Joe's relationships, but the Post did not find evidence that Joe Biden personally benefited uh, from or knew any details. And I'm watching uh, John Harwood uh, on CNN breathlessly trying to say this has nothing to do with the president, kind of indicating that Hunter's been a problem his whole life and the poor president's had to deal with it. Uh, one has nothing to do with the other. Uh, there is proof, and there's a phone call away from Tony Bobulinski to say how the president met twice with Joe Biden. He references the big guy in emails. People have said it's the big guy in emails. He is referenced in talking to his daughter about the big guy in emails being his father, that he's had to do all this work and supply money to his father and kind of exasperated because of it. All you have to do is go to C-SPAN. There's Tony Bobble. You don't have to go to Fox because we probably don't want to go to Fox and use what we carried it live to. Go to C-SPAN. They carried t t Tony Bobulinski talking about the links, the times he met, and all the information that he had that he would eventually turn over to Ron Johnson's committee in the Senate that talked about the links with Joe Biden. They met at the Beverly Hilton Hotel behind a pole because not to be seen, and they talked generally about these projects, saying, please take care of my son, look out for me. That was basically their job screening for Tony Bobulinski because they didn't have a lot of his knowledge as a Penn State guy with great international business. He didn't need the money. He thought he would take on the challenge when he was recruited the to do it. The question is, is, was there quid pro quo? I mean, even when Bill Clinton was getting impeached, it was there perceived. quid pro quo? It, it was perceived that he got Monica Lewinsky the job at the Pentagon. No, no, perceived that if you, you know, the vice president's son, you do this, you're an energy exactly. company linked That's with these. For influence. So if, if Bill Clinton gets impeached for the influence, quid pro quo, what he did for Monica in exchange for that, then is that happening in this case too? We will give, we will pay you large amounts of money if we have influence with your dad, who was the vice president at the time. Yeah, it's hard to put that in the contract, but. That is kind of what is felt to have been the deal. Miranda Devine, who wrote Laptop from Hell, which suddenly the Washington Post said, okay, it was actually from hell. Uh, she talked to Brian about a half an hour ago. If you're going to actually finally be late with the story, 18 months late, um, and you've had the laptop in your possession since June of 2021, um, it really behooves you to give your readers the entire truth. And I feel as if the Washington Post spent 7,000 words yesterday uh, in, in their paper on two stories, which really left out some crucial details. These are the same newspapers that won Pulitzers for their coverage of the Russia collusion hoax with the most flimsy uh, evidence. Here you have actual evidence, documents that you can corroborate with other people who were on emails. There are every which way these things can be corroborated, as we did before we published, we did our due diligence. Uh, but they, uh, they, they just can't do basic journalism. And remember, and she's talking about we, meaning the New York Post. In the New York Post story regarding this today, they say, following the expose, the Washington Post 
fact checker features said that the paper has not been able to verify or authenticate these emails and said there were fears that emails could have been part of a broader disinformation campaign by Russia. We heard that from a lot of people, but the disinformation campaign was actually from Democrats and from a lot of members of the mainstream media. But now it's being revealed. Matt Gates came out yesterday or the day before and said all 51 of those intelligence experts, including five directors of the CIA, should have their, their uh, top secret clearance revoked because they put their credibility in the line saying this is typical uh, Russian disinformation, the patterns, a little bit of a wiggle room there. The other thing to keep in mind, Ron Johnson was moving fast on this investigation, but you know who stopped him? Two Republicans from moving forward, Mitt Romney and Rob Portman. Mm. So that's inexcusable, too. And then, of course, they lose control of the Senate because of the Georgia situation, and the investigation stops on a dime. 22,000 emails from 2009 to 2019 that are on that laptop that was left at the repair shop in Delaware. They're real. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. Republican senators are exposing Hunter Biden for using his father's name to make himself rich. They say they have receipts connecting the president's son to $100,000 payment from a Chinese-linked firm. It was obvious Hunter's laptop was authentic as soon as we started seeing the information from it. But the media has been complicit. And now we know it's the Democrats and the media that was backing him up were the ones peddling the uh, Russian disinformation. Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins us now. And Joe, now the Washington Post finally joining the party years after it began. Quote, here's their headline, Inside Hunter Biden's multi-million dollar deals with a Chinese energy company. Joe, how much are the walls really closing in on Hunter? If the mainstream media is now saying officially in March of 2022, this is a big deal. Well, in honor of Bruce Willis and, and his retirement that was announced yesterday, uh, unfortunately, Bruce uh, uh, suffering from a cognitive uh, disease. Welcome to the party, pal, uh, from, from the great diehard of 1988. Welcome to the party, mainstream media, as far as covering this seriously. Uh, uh, look, I, I'm old enough to remember when Hunter Biden's former business party, you remember uh, Tony Bobulinski, right? He told Tucker Carlson, October of 2020, just a couple of days before the election, about a loan a Chinese energy company gave to the Bidens. That interview was dismissed. It was ignored. We heard all about 50 former intelligence officers and officials, including John Brennan, uh, formerly CIA, now with MSNBC, and James Clapper, uh, former director of national intelligence, all saying this is just Russian disinformation, nothing to see here. Uh, we also heard Bobulinski saying that the Biden family is compromised by the Chinese communist government. Uh, the argument that you hear from some Democratic voters, uh, some folks that I speak to, is, okay, Hunter's a bad seed. He did some shady stuff, but he's not in government, and he has zero to do with his father in Joe Biden. But if Hunter Biden received all this money from Russian officials, from Chinese officials, uh, on top of what he earned from a Ukrainian energy company, all while Joe Biden was vice president, it does very much mean something from a national security perspective. And now we're seeing more reporting from the New York Times and Washington Post, so perhaps finally the broadcast news networks... Uh, including CNN as well, will start to explore the story seriously. And if things go from bad to worse in terms of indictments, uh, you know, for Hunter Biden, uh, Joe Biden will finally have to answer questions around this, not just say it's Russian disinformation or he never spoke to his son about his business dealings, because clearly now, Todd, Ashley, that's not the case. And then speaking of CNN, let's listen to John Harwood, what he said yesterday. There is zero evidence that... Vice President Biden or President Biden has done anything wrong in connection with what Hunter Biden has done. Joe, are they just never going to admit it, even if it's right in front of their face? <laughs> Ashley, it's like, again, nothing to see here. Let's not even talk about this. Uh, if John Harwood was actually a journalist and didn't work for the Democratic National uh, Committee, and there's WikiLeaks emails showing that he very much is in contact with them on a, on a, uh, on a daily basis, uh, then he would try to explore this story more and get that curiosity gene back to say, hey, there's some smoke here. Let's see if there's real fire. Instead of going on television and saying, Joe Biden has nothing to do with this, let's not even talk about it. Uh, at some point, this investigation 
administration will make even the John Harwoods of the world uh, start to take this seriously. Let's see what happens from here, guys. We were promised CNN would be going back to reporting facts. I guess we're not quite there just yet. Joe Concha, we appreciate your time as always, friend. Thank you, sir. All right. The liberal media is finally reporting on Hunter Biden's laptop in the federal investigation into whether he violated tax, money laundering, and foreign lobbying laws. The federal investigation into Hunter Biden's business practices is broader than previously known. Tonight, reports that the Justice Department's investigation into the tax affairs of President Biden's son, Hunter, is intensifying. Just lay out your reporting here because this is very, very bad for the president's son. It, it is. But the media not only ignored the story about the president's son during the election, they tried to discredit it. Remember this? If the New York Post tells you your mom loves you, you should check it out. We are not talking about fully reliable sources here. It feels like a, a repeat from last cycle. It's the, you know, but her emails again, and it's kind of ridiculous. It's a story raising concerns about whether it's real or just designed to sow confusion in the final weeks of the election. For all we know, these emails are made up, or maybe some are real and others are fakes. We don't know. But we do know that this is a classic example of the right-wing media machine. What a change. I mean, CBS, ABC, New York Times, everyone finally reporting on it. Shannon, CNN calling it very, very bad. It's like a dam broke open or something. Yeah, you're like, okay, welcome to the party, everyone. Very interesting that you decided to show up a year and a half after everybody else. And I get it. Yes, we as reporters are supposed to verify things, but that means investigating them, not immediately discrediting and shutting them down and say they're not worth investigating. That's different. So my take right now is, okay, is there some self-introspection from these different media outlets to think about this? Megan McCardle over at the uh, Washington Post wrote this. She said, I've heard all the excuses as to why this is actually an instance of journalism and tech moderation working like like they should. It was unverified. I've heard too close to an election. And even if the emails were real, they may have been attained illegally. We can't have that. All of which might sound very reasonable if only my profession had displayed the same caution with stories that made conservatives look bad. She ends the piece saying we are not trusted because we are not entirely trustworthy. So, OK, this is a good time for everybody to take a look at the mirror and decide the next time one of these stories pops up how they're going to handle it. Yeah, it's very wise introspection there that you just read uh, because far too many outlets, they just threw it aside. They didn't investigate. Some even tried to discredit it. Look at NPR. Um, here you have their managing editor. He said, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories, and we don't want to waste the listeners and readers' <laughs> time on stories that are just pure distractions. And CNN, remember the political director caught on tape saying, obviously, we're not going to run with the New York Post story on Hunter Biden. That was Project Veritas that caught that. Juan, why is it so obvious that they weren't going to run with the story? Well, I mean, first, the, the point is to, to be emphasized here is the mainstream media is playing catch up. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But if you're asking about why it happened back then, I think there are three key points. One is it was being leaked by Rudy Giuliani, who was working with President Trump, obviously in an attempt to discredit his political opponent, President Biden, just before the 2020 election. So there was a lot of caution around that. Secondly, the New York Post had access to a, a laptop, apparently, but wasn't sharing it when others said, hey, you know, can we see this so we can check it out ourselves? There was no sharing of access. And I think then people were like, well, if we can't verify it ourselves, let's ask. And now nobody could authenticate Juan, it. And people feared that there was, again, a repeat Juan, of Russian interference in an American election. Hold on, Juan, though. On this network, you had the business partner of Hunter Biden, Tony Bobulinski, a firsthand source, giving a point of view on this. I mean, isn't that something to be covered? Uh, yeah, but again, you don't know exactly what's going on. And I think you have to be careful before you, you know, discredit or put out something that, especially given what happened in 2016, especially then you're going to put out something days before an election that is going to be politically damaging to one side or the other. And I think that's what you're dealing with. I mean, look, you know, we're talking about mainstream media. Right now, you know, conservative media is not paying attention to Trump asking Putin in the middle of a war. Oh, uh, can you get me some more dirt on Hunter Biden? To me, that's an outrage, too. So, you know, both sides have some hands in this thing. And I, I don't think there's any question, the broader point, mainstream media 
New York Times, yeah, Washington look, Post are playing catch up. President, President Trump's not president right, right now, Julie. I think there's a clear distinction. And to suggest that, you know, all of a sudden the media learned from 2016, oh, we're not going to repeat the, repeat the Russia dossier, so we won't cover Hunter. No, I think this was, we're not going to cover something that could benefit the candidate that we want. His name is Joseph Biden. Right, and I understand Trump isn't the president right now, Biden is, but let's just pretend for a second that Trump was the president. And we are actually not talking about Hunter, but we are talking about Ivanka or Eric or Donald Trump Jr. Do you think the narrative narrative would be a bit different it would be black and white I mean it would be opposite coverage and you certainly wouldn't be hearing from any of the mainstream media defending the emails saying oh well some of them are probably fake are you kidding me this would lead every single newscast so it's completely a double standard and 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 and, and no I do not think that the president should now be calling in onto Russia to be getting digging up dirt on Hunter Biden I think that's inappropriate but the tables would completely be turned if Trump actually was still in office Totally. And Emily, I mean, just one more example, because there are so many we could go with. But here's the Washington Post, you know, legend outlet and media. Here's what they said about this back in October of 2020, of course, just before the election. This has not been able to be verified or authenticated, these emails. We fear that the emails could be part of a broader disinformation campaign. That was their so-called fact checker. Uh, now, here we go. Inside Hunter Biden's multi-million dollar deal with the Chinese energy company. Why didn't they investigate it then? Because they were pursuing and pushing their self-narrative that everything out of the GOP, everything out of the far right is somehow not worth taxpayers' time. And I think what's so, what's so uh, illustrative about WAPO's reporting now is that they underline the point why it was in our best interest as citizens, as taxpayers, to hear everything, to, to have the investigation play out, that it was worthy of attention because we care and need to know about potential conflicts of interest. So WAPO goes on to say in that article, Kaylee, while many aspects they admit of that Hunter Biden's financial arrangement with CEFC China had been previously reported and were included in a Republican-led Senate report from 2020. And then they admit a Washington Post review confirmed many of the key details. As you read, they found additional documents showing Biden family interactions with these Chinese executives. They go on to say, look, we have not found anything, any reason that Joe Biden personally benefited. However, they go on to say, new documents, which include, and then they specify, illustrate the ways in which the family profited from relationships built over Joe Biden's decades of public service. Now, if that is not a smoking gun, if that is not enough reason for taxpayers to deserve to have this play out, to deserve an apology and accountability from the mainstream media, I don't know what is. I know we got to go, but just yeah. speaking on reporting, I would like to see some reporting as to what Joe Biden knew. Because if, again, Trump was in office and we were talking about his kids, everyone would absolutely pile on and say, there is no doubt that Trump knew exactly what his kids were up to. Yeah, I can't wait for that expose from the Washington Post on who the big guy was. I have mm -hmm. my guesses. So something's going on with Joe Biden. His poll numbers are absolutely tanking, but it seems like elements within the Democratic Party are turning on him. We're not going to pretend we understand exactly what's going on here, but something definitely is. Here's this example, and you remember this very well. Just before the last election, the New York Post ran a story about the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop. It was a huge story, but big tech censored it immediately. CNN and dozens of other former Intel officials told us that laptop was Russian disinformation. There are fears that what Giuliani is now pushing here in the United States could actually be part of Russia's latest and very massive disinformation campaign in the U.S. presidential election. So you have a president who is asking to obtain Russian disinformation, knowing that that is what it is. He is accepting that same information, and he is then turning it and using it on the campaign trail against uh, his, his opponent. And that's mind-blowing. It's sort of a, a crazy quilt at this point, uh, uh, which has all the hallmarks of, of, of Russian disinformation. That said, it, it wasn't for lack of trying. CNN reported on Friday that U.S. authorities are seeing if those emails we just talked about are connected to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort. So it turns out when they accuse people of Russian disinformation, they're not always sincere. Of course, they're liars. They'll say whatever they need to say. That was before the election. They needed to get Biden elected. They did it. But now they're telling you something very different. Now they're telling you, in fact, the laptop is real. Here's CNN yesterday. This is very, very bad for the president's son. It is. And it's an investigation, as you pointed out, going back to 2018. And, and right now, 
prosecutors in Delaware uh, are, are focusing on a number of things, including whether Hunter Biden and, and some of his business associates uh, violated laws, including tax and money laundering laws and foreign lobbying laws. They're now gaining steam and they need to make a decision, I think, in the at least intermediate future. This case has been going on for four years and there is a realistic chance this could result in federal charges. Of course, then we'd be in unprecedented political territory, not legal territory, but a situation of having potentially the Justice Department prosecuting and trying to imprison the son of the president. What a freak show that channel is. Good luck to their new subscription service. But now they're telling you, yeah, it's all true, actually. And that's not the only story about Russian disinformation that has fallen apart this week. The Federal Election Commission just fined the DNC and Hillary Clinton, her campaign, more than $100,000. The FEC determined that the Clinton campaign tried to hide its role in funding the Steele dossier. Steele dossier is the false document that claimed, among many other things, that Putin got Trump elected. Turns out the disinformation was, in fact, paid for by the campaign. It was coming from the DNC. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight. None of us are perfect, me especially. All of us make mistakes at one time or another. And when we mess up, it's never our fault. We blame someone else. When you were a kid and you forgot to do your homework, who did you blame? Ah! You ate my homework? I didn't know dogs really did that. You rear end a guy on your way to work? That sounds weird. It's definitely his fault for stopping short. We all project our mistakes onto somebody else. If we blame them, then maybe nobody is going to accuse us. Well, the Democratic Party took that to heart during the Trump administration, projecting all of their issues onto our former president. He certainly acts like a president that is compromised. What do the Russians have on Donald Trump politically, financially, and personally? Talking about the entirely legitimate question of whether Donald Trump could be compromised. I do think the president is compromised. You have to wonder how deep that compromise is and what he would or would not do to protect his own interests. They couldn't stop telling us Trump was compromised. But in reality, it was their guy who was compromised. And now all of a sudden, you don't hear the word compromised anymore. It's almost as if being compromised was only a thing when Trump was in the White House. You'd guess after the Washington Post and the New York Times finally admitted that Hunter's laptop's real, they'd connect the dots to the big guy and realize that maybe, just maybe, Joe Biden is compromised too. But no, they're letting Hunter be the fall guy and using that as a smokescreen to cover for Joe. It's one giant containment operation, and the media and the D.C. system are all behind it. How else would you explain it? Are we supposed to just believe that no one finds it one bit suspicious that while Biden's family was being paid by China, Joe Biden was downplaying the China threat? China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. They can't even figure out how to deal with the, 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 the fact that they have this great division between the China Sea and the mountains in the east, I mean, in the west. They can't figure out how they're going to deal with the corruption that exists within the system. I mean, I, you know, they're not bad folks, folks, but guess what? They're not a they're, they're not, they're competition for us. The Biden family's ties to China go way, way back. Joe's been visiting China since he was a young senator out of Delaware, taking photo ops in Chinese neighborhoods and even buying kids little ice pops. It was a big event every time Joe visited. But the Biden family business in China began seriously in 2013, when Vice President Biden boarded Air Force Two destined for Beijing. So what was Hunter Biden doing on Air Force Two on an official overseas trip with the vice president? Hunter wasn't there on pleasure, although I'm sure there was plenty of that for Hunter in China. Hunter was on a business trip, and Joe would be the one to open some doors. Hunter would arrange an introduction between his Chinese partner, Jonathan Lee, and his dad, the vice president. 
The two shook hands, and Lee later described it as a good social meeting. And it turned out to be a big break for the Bidens. Ten days after the big guy met Hunter's associate, Hunter was offered a fortune. Perfect timing. A 10% stake in a new Chinese company called Bohai Harvest. And the Chinese threw Hunter a board seat which obviously Hunter deserved with all of his business experience. Peter Schweitzer reports the Chinese paid the vice president's son $20 million. How'd Hunter earn that? Nobody knows, but we know, don't we? This wasn't enough for the Biden family, though. They wanted more. The Bidens have to pay the bills, including Joe's. So Hunter started turning down his Secret Service detail when he traveled overseas needed some privacy, and China started slipping him even more money. That's when he was introduced to a Chinese energy conglomerate called CEFC in 2015, a company that serves as the arm to the Communist Party's Belt and Road Initiative. This initiative is a threat to American security and prosperity, and the Biden family was their lobbyist. Hunter brought Joe's butter, brother Jim along, and the two of them started dicing up deals with the enemy. It was a pretty lucrative business for the Bidens. Hunter and Jim raked in almost $4 million in just consulting fees. What were they doing consulting a Chinese energy company controlled by the Chinese military? They were probably just greedy stooges for the communists. And these Chinese guys reeked of corruption. I mean reeked. While this was all going down, one of their head honchos, Patrick Ho, was put under FISA surveillance by U.S. intelligence for bribing African leaders and helping Iran evade our sanctions. The same guy was trying to win favors with the Biden family, too. He was giving speeches under surveillance all over Washington, D.C., saying things like, quote, friendship is best maintained by having a common experience. Indeed, one of the ways and perhaps the best way we believe to alleviate international tension and resolve political conflict is for the parties to enter into joint projects and ventures with one another. Hmm. It sounds eerily similar to what Joe Biden said just two months later at a speech in where? In China. We're trying to build a new kind of relationship between major powers. One. Uh, uh, that's different, uh, um, one that is defined by constructive cooperation, healthy competition, and, and a shared respect. Looks like they were just using the same talking points. I mean, Joe has a history of plagiarism, so that doesn't surprise any of us. And they sure did reward him for it. China sent Hunter another million dollars in exchange for his legal services. This after Patrick Ho got locked up for corruption here. Nice people the Bidens are in business with, huh? On top of the three diamond carat ring that, that China bribed Hunter with, the Bidens and CEFC opened up a joint account together under the name Hudson West 3, where money kept flowing in and out to Hunter and Jim's individual accounts. The Biden family was swimming in Chinese cash. Hey, Joe, did your son ever get paid by the Chinese? My son has not made money in terms of this thing about, uh, what are you talking about, China. <laughs> what a liar the president is. He thinks we're fools. So does the media. Hunter was even working on opening up an office for Hudson West in Washington, D.C. He had keys made, ready for some notable people. Obviously, the Chinese, James Biden, Jill Biden, and, of course, the big guy, Joe Biden, all ready to share offices with the Chinese. Washington Post mentioned this yesterday, and yet somehow they couldn't connect the dots between Joe Biden and CEFC. Huh. Maybe they're just taking Joe's word for it. I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses. How do you fly across the world to China with Hunter, help him set up deals, and then never ask, hey, what'd you do in China? <laughs> How was the trip? Come on, man. 
It's obviously a lie. We know Hunter was putting aside 10% for the big guy. The emails prove it. And if there was ever any doubt as to who the big guy is, Hunter's former associate, Tony Bubalinski, confirmed it. It has 10% for the big guy held by H. I 1,000% sit here and know that the big guy is referencing Joe Biden. Um, it's, that's crystal clear to me because I lived it. I met with the former vice president in person multiple times. That 10% was for a joint venture between Hunter and CEFC called Sinohawk. And Tony Bobulinski would know all about the deal because the Bidens appointed him CEO of the company. Washington Post, are you paying attention? Joe even met with Bobulinski twice in, seven, in 2017 to vet him. Do you hear that, Washington Post? The facts are out in the open. Joe was always involved. Look at the family. For decades, it's how it's been run. And now, he's compromised. Joe Biden and the Biden family are compromised. And uh, I just don't see, given the history here and the facts, how Joe can't be um, uh, influenced in, in some manner based on the history that they have where, here with CFC. And but this might only be a small piece of a much larger pie. We know Hunter cut off his paper trail from his overseas trips, and we know Chinese businessmen were granting, were given access to the White House when Joe was vice president. So what we don't know is this. What went on behind those closed doors? We know China knows what went down, and if they have a copy of Hunter's laptop, they definitely won't lose it like our FBI did. And that means... They'd have all the dirt they need to twist Joe's arm, laptop, no laptop, doesn't matter. They know what went down. Blackmail him so he plays soft. All while they go out and just keep playing us for fools. Can you blame him? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. We are just seven months away from the midterm elections. They'll be upon us very quickly. The Biden White House is in one crisis after another. And yet again today, a key inflation gauge just set another 40-year high. This impacts every single American, every American household, a whopping 6.4 percent increase. And according to Bloomberg News, the average American family now can expect to spend $5,200 more this year or $433 more each month on the exact same items they bought one year ago. Already, one out of every five workers in this country is now running out of money before payday. That number is expected to get much worse. And in Biden's economy, it is especially worse and burdensome and a hardship for the poor and the middle class in this country. At the core of these economic woes, Record high after record high gas prices. And tonight, the American people just know who to blame. They say, yeah, it's Joe Biden. His policies are the, are the number one cause for the increase in fuel costs, which means that's more to heat and cool our homes and more we pay at every store that we go to. This poll conducted by Quinnipiac. Now, here's a news flash for Democrats ahead of the midterms. American people... Guess what? They have figured it out. New Green Deal socialism's not going to work ever. And on the campaign trail, it was your candidate, Joe Biden, vowing to end fossil fuels. This was the predictable result. And during his very first week in office, he banned drilling in Anwar. We have such vast resources. We could have cheap energy for every American. He banned new exploration and auctions on federal lands. He killed the Keystone XL pipeline. The Alberta premier said if they finished it, it would have been done by now. Uh, we would ha have 900,000 uh, barrels of oil a, a, a day flowing into this country from Canada. Last month, the administration, they paused all new leases on oil and gas because of climate change. What a surprise. U.S. gas prices predictably are higher than ever. In fact, costs have been rising every single month since Joe Biden took office. Vladimir Putin did not cause that. Joe Biden, New Green Deal radical socialism, caused it. But according to him, Vladimir Putin and COVID-19 are to blame for his woes. Well, if it's COVID, why didn't it happen under Trump? Take a look. The problem we're facing with gas prices has two roots. First, 
the pandemic. When COVID struck, demand for oil plummeted, so production slowed down worldwide. It's because of the strength and the speed of our recovery, demand for oil shot back up much faster than the supply. That's why the cost of gas began to rise last year. The second route is Vladimir Putin. The start of this year, gas was about $3.30 a gallon. Today, it's about average in 420, 422. It's higher in many states. Nearly a dollar more in less than three months. And the reason for that is because of Putin's war. Blame Trump, blame COVID, blame Putin, blame everybody. No, it's your policies, economic and energy policies, Joe, that caused this. And Biden apparently had trouble opening his eyes, squinting into the light. It's kind of like when he whispers or he says, come on, man, what are you, a junkie? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women are created equal and down by, oh, oh the, the thing, you know the thing. God, the creator of everything. Anyway. And he outlined, by the way, his solutions for the oil and gas crisis he caused. Now, the first is a political ploy that does very little to lower costs and puts our national security at risk. And for the next six months, Joe will deplete America's strategic, strategic reserves by releasing a million barrels of oil a day. And that's nothing. This reserve, by the way, is meant for national security emergencies, not for Joe's political advantage going into a midterm and not for rising gas prices either. It is only a short-term Band-Aid that will do nothing to significantly reduce costs. It doesn't get to the underlying problem, doesn't get to the root cause, and it conveniently expires on Election Day. Moments ago, our very own Chad Program, well, he caught up with the spiritual leader of the Democratic Party's climate alarmist religious cult. That, of course, is the author of the New Green Deal Socialism, and that's Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, to see what she thinks about Biden's new plan. Let's take a look. And while the president is, is making a decision to uh, release some strategic reserves to relieve some of the pressure on pricing, I think a lot of these fossil fuel and oil and gas companies also need to do their part. And uh, we have to understand that sometimes it's about taking a smaller profit margin if we're going to be really engaged uh, in all of this together, particularly in the response to Russia. Should it be refilled after they drain this portion of the sprawl? You know, I, I think we need to take a look at the proportion of what is uh, is is being used. But ultimately, we really do need to be investing in renewables. Here we go, which brings us to Biden's second solution to lower gas prices. He now wants Congress to slap oil and gas companies with fines if they don't drill on already approved federal leases. We've already told you all about this, a terrible plan. We'll give you two reasons why. One, any fine, guess what? That'll get passed on to you, the consumer, which means gas prices will even go higher. And two, oil leases, they are provided pre-exploration. Many and most of these unused leases don't have enough oil or gas that can be extracted. That's why they're not using them. Now, if you think that's bad, Biden's next solution, well, to rising gas prices, that's even worse. Take a listen. Ultimately, we and the whole world need to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels altogether. We need to choose long-term security over energy and climate vulnerability. We need to double down on our commitment to clean energy, and tackling the climate crisis. Under my plan, which is before the Congress now, we can take advantage of the next generation of electric vehicles that a typical driver will save about $80 a month from not having to pay gas at the pump. If your home is powered by safer, cheaper, cleaner electricity like solar or heat pumps, you can save about $500 a month on average. What's up with the eyes? You can save $80 a month. All right, if you just go out and buy a $60,000 electric car, and guess what? In 62 years, you can recoup your investment. According to Speaker Nancy Pelosi, it's a small price to pay while the Green New Deal religious climate cult warriors and her party are out to save the planet. Take a look. We cannot allow the fossil fuel industry to use this as an excuse to reverse everything we're doing to save the planet. One of the things I think that the president may say, I don't have this as a fact, is that we will use the um, Defense Production Act to speed up uh, diversification uh, so that we're not so dependent uh, on oil. 
another cognitive train wreck when you think Democrats, Democrats can't get uh, any more out of touch with all of this or any more inept, think again. I present to you Vice President Kamala Harris giving a speech about Jamaica. Now, you got to listen to every word to really get this. Pay close attention. Just as it has been in the United States for Jamaica, one of the issues that has been presented as an issue that is economic in the way of its impact has been the pandemic. So to that end, we are announcing today also that we will assist Jamaica in COVID recovery um, by assisting in terms of the recovery efforts in Jamaica that have been essential to, I believe, what is necessary to strengthen not only uh, the, the, the issue of public health, but also the economy. I needed an interpreter. Anyway, the midterms are fast approaching. There are no lifelines for this Democratic, radical, new Green Deal Socialist Party. The economy is poised, sadly, to get worse. High gas prices, sadly, they're not going away. War in, in, in Europe is raging. Sadly, it doesn't seem to be coming to an end soon. Our southern border, take a look. It's now bracing for another massive surge. And yes, violent crime is spiking out of control thanks to Democrats and their defund, dismantle uh, police and no bail insanity. And your president, your vice president, and even your speaker are visibly incompetent. Now, multiple new polls have Biden at all-time lows. It, and according to MSDNC's Chucky Todd, the Democrats are in for a full shellacking. It's rare that I quote this usual idiot. He got it right for once. The current round track in our poll is 71%. What's really striking is third straight poll where the direction of the country has been above 70%. There's only been one other time we've had that in our poll. It is not a good time. And if you have 71%, forget, look, 65% wrong track is a bad number. 71%, that's why it is in the shellacking category. You've got three, essentially three numbers here that all point into dangerous territory for the Democrats and the incumbent party. Presidential job rating at 40 percent, wrong track over 70 percent, and the Republicans leading in the generic ballot. Not a good time. None of these Sunday hosts are like, well, the great Tim Russett, and he was great. Now, vote like your country depends on it, because if Democrats maintain power, your life's only going to get worse. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. The federal investigation into Hunter Biden is hitting a boiling point as House Republicans demand the White House turn over documents regarding his overseas business dealings during the Obama administration. Quote, if the Russian government is attempting to influence American policy in Ukraine by exploiting Hunter Biden's connection with his father, the American people deserve to know it. Brett Tolman is a former federal prosecutor and the executive director of Right on Crime. He joins us now. Brett, based upon what you have seen, why do you say Hunter Biden should should be indicted. Todd, if it were anybody else, they would have already been indicted. Can you imagine if the contents of this laptop applied to, say, Don, Donald Trump Jr. or, or somebody else in, uh, that's on the political right, as opposed to where you know Hunter Biden was positioned at the time? The, the laptop itself and the testimony of Bobolinsky outlines a conspiracy among multiple individuals to hide the income that they were receiving from Ukraine and possibly China, and then to distribute that money without the government knowing it, and then to avoid taxes on it. All of that is, is justifying search warrants. It's justifying criminal charges. And this could have been brought months and months ago. Brett, who else should be in, indicted in this? Well, from Bobolinsky's testimony, who is a business part partner of Hunter Biden's, along with the contents of several emails, you have the possibility that it's Jill Biden, Joe Biden, James Biden, the uncle, as well as Hunter Biden, and then various others that facilitated their ability to take money from countries, large amounts, millions of dollars we're talking about, Todd, and to be able to hide that from the government and to hide what they were buying with that money, which, you know, we're afraid to see maybe access that was given to the vice president at the time. To follow up, would you go after President Biden? I would be issuing months ago, I would have issued search warrants. I would have requested FISA warrants to uncover what was happening with China. I would have put together, um, you know, a team of people I know that there are U.S. attorneys that are well-meaning, and, and the U.S. attorney in Delaware, for example, has had this case for a long time. 
anybody else in this country, this would have we would have seen these indictments uh, probably before the election. The White House, of course, denying all of this. Listen to what they said yesterday. During the last presidential debate, then Vice President Biden was asked if there was anything inappropriate or unethical about his son's relationships, business dealings in China and or Ukraine. The president said nothing was unethical. We absolutely stand by the president's comment, and I would point you to uh, the reporting on this, which referenced statements that we made at the time uh, that we gave to The Washington Post, who worked on this story. Uh, and, but as you know, I don't speak for Hunter Biden, so there's not more I can say on that. Let's fast forward to a jury. You are in charge. You're delivering your opening statement. What is the thesis of your case, Brett? You know, the jury needs to know the full context of what Hunter Biden was doing and who he was doing it for. And I would be articulating that it is not just about one individual. It's about an individual that has the ability to put a very powerful, influential person in our country, his father, next to and with other foreign nationals that want something from the government. That is a classic pay-to-play scheme, giving them access to the highest levels of our government. We should be outraged, but a jury should be motivated and should be returning indictments against at least Hunter Biden and perhaps his father and others. And coming off that soundbite we played, obviously the White House is standing firm in its denials of this. That's setting up a clash for the entire country and world to see. Brett Tolman, the name of your organization is Right on Crime. That's the way I said it. I believe it's that and not Right on Crime, because that would be awkward and against the brand. <laughs> Brett Tolman, thank you, sir. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> Right on it. Crime, yes. Thanks so much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. All right now, as the criminal investigation into zero experience Hunter and his dad is heating up, Republican lawmakers are now looking for answers on his foreign business dealings with the family syndicate. They're now demanding that he turn over communications with the Obama White House. Now, writing in letters to the White House and National Archives, quote, Hunter Biden's connections throughout the Russia, Russian sphere of influence have now become especially relevant in the fast-moving and developing Russian war in Ukraine. And today, former federal prosecutor Brett Tolman claimed that if the investigation revolved around anyone other than Hunter Biden, they would have already been indicted. Now, but Hunter's corrupt business transactions extend far beyond Russia, as we have chronicled on this show, and made well. Uh, apparently made over a million dollars sitting on the board of Burisma, well over a million, him and his company took in, and he took money from, let's see, a, a Kazakhstan oligarch for a brand new sports car, and a Russian oligarch, the former first lady of Moscow, that's three and a half million, and a hundred thousand dollar shopping spree with a, with a Chinese national, and then, of course, millions and millions of dollars in other business deals with connections to the CCP uh, and also Chinese intelligence and the $1.5 billion deal with the Bank of China. Now, despite mountains of evidence to the contrary, Biden lied about all of this repeatedly, claiming again and again and again that he and his son never at one point ever discussed his foreign business dealings and he never profited from his business dealings in China. Take a look. My son has not made money in terms of this thing about uh, what are you talking about? China. I have not had it. The only guy made money from China is this guy. He's the only one. Nobody else has made money from China. Joey was lying. And when pushed on the issue during yesterday's White House briefings, well, the communications director, Kate Bedingfield, doubled down on Biden's lies. Wow, what a shocker. Take a look. We absolutely stand by the president's comment, and I would point you to uh, the reporting on this, which referenced statements that we made at the time uh, that we gave to The Washington Post, who worked on this story. Uh, and, but as you know, I don't speak for Hunter Biden, so there's not more I can say on that. It was reaction, the man that turned Hunter's laptop over to the FBI and law enforcement, John Paul Mac Isaac, is with us, and Fox News contributor uh, Jason Chavis. Um, John Paul, you, you put everything on the line here. You were given a laptop. You see 
information in the course of recovering what's on the laptop that is concerning to you in terms of the legal aspect of it. All of a sudden, the laptop's never picked up. You hand it over to the FBI, and your life's been nothing but a living hell as a result of it. Tell us what your life has been like since you did this. Well, once once the story was out and my name was leaked to the public, it uh, it's been a matter of at first running and hiding. Uh, and now it's trying to just rebuild my life and and do it in a manner that's not restricted by public opinion of me being involved in a Russian disinformation campaign. Yeah, and but why did you have to close down your shop? This was your business. Well, initially the media did a good job of blocking the story, so customers were still coming in, but they didn't understand the police presence or why there was uh, feces and rotten vegetables thrown at the shop. So uh, eventually it got out and people stopped coming in uh, for service. People started coming in uh, without computers, and uh, I can only imagine that they were there to do me harm. So uh, mm -hmm. by the end of November, or by, by the end of October, I had made the decision, and by November 2nd, I closed the shop. You know, there's now Miranda Devine's book, The Laptop from Hell. What specifically alarmed you that there might be something illegal on that laptop, specifically? I don't know that you've ever answered that question. Well, I saw a lot of things that were embarrassing that somebody would definitely not want to make to the tabloids. Uh, I saw a lot of financial records that uh, showed a lot of uh, foreign money and a, and a lot of money, like a lot of money. And then there was uh, some other documents that I thought were kind of strange. Uh, Blue Star Strategies uh, sending White House briefings about Ukraine and the vice president's travel schedule to a private Ukrainian citizen. And the national security ramifications alone uh, were disturbing. And I felt that this was definitely oh. something that had to be taken to the FBI. And you also saw illegal activity, the, you, for example, the picture of uh, Hunter Biden with the crack pipe, uh, that's illegal activity. Uh, pictures of a sexual nature, um, were you concerned about the age of the people in the pictures? <sighs> No, I, did, I didn't really focus my attention on what was salacious on the laptop. My bigger concern was the security of the nation, the, the criminality that had potentially taken place, and that could uh, happen again if not investigated properly. You know, Jason, it was authenticated because apparently Hunter's lawyers came back months later asking for Hunter's laptop back. You would think that would have been the... Uh, the, the defining moment where the media would have realized this thing is real. What's your take on all of it? Well, first of all, to John, I hope uh, he understands there are millions of people who are appreciative, and I hope he's buoyed up despite all the, the stuff that he's taken in his personal life. There are those of us that care about law and order and justice, and it takes people like you stepping up, so thank you for doing that. Um, I, I wish the, the criminal justice system, though, in this country would take it seriously. It's one thing. We, we know that the Washington Post and the New York Times and MSNBC, we know they're in the pocket of the Democrats and that they'll do anything and everything uh, to, to get their people elected. But we don't have the U.S. attorneys moving the way they should. Where's the IRS in a lot of this? Where's the foreign intelligence services? How come Adam Schiff still has a security clearance? How come Eric Swalwell still has a security clearance and sits on the Intel Committee? I could go on and on and on. We didn't even mention Romania and the $100,000 that went into Joe Biden's grandkids from the former director of the FBI, Louis Free. Uh, there are in Mexico in providing access. There's so much, but John was right. He saw something was wrong. He provided it to the authorities, but the authorities are letting him down and letting the rest of the country down by not pursuing and putting this guy in handcuffs. Yeah, I mean, it really is uh, unbelievable. John Paul, Mac Isaac, I want to echo Jason's comments. Um, I'm so sorry that this has impacted your life regularly. It's amazing that uh, Democrats supposedly, supposedly praise whistleblowers, even hearsay, non-whistleblower whistleblowers, and yet 
you did the right thing and you've been harmed because of it. Um, thank you for all you, you've done for your country and we wish you the very best and thanks for being with us tonight, Jason. Thank you.